video supports the first lesson for the week of June 8th in the BCPS Secondary Reading Curriculum. The title of this lesson is Choose and Use a Strategy. I'm Nancy Perkins, a resource teacher in both the offices of Secondary ELA and Title I. Take a look at this picture. What comes to your mind as you're looking at it? Spaceships or spacecraft? Green aliens with big heads and big eyes? The invasion of Earth by these aliens? Or maybe stories you've heard about alien abductions? A strange topic indeed for us to explore. Do you think UFOs or unidentified flying objects exist? Are they really visitors from other worlds flying close to our Earth? Or are there actually logical explanations for what they are? Watch this brief video from Discovery Education to learn about some possible explanations for what people might be seeing when they see something curious in the sky. UFOs, unidentified flying objects, are captured in photos and on film and are witnessed by ordinary citizens in Gulf Breeze, Florida. The, the object was very large, I would say the size of a, a medium size, a large airplane. We could see it well enough that we could see the light and see the portholes and see that there was like a little lighted dome on the top. Now, having seen it myself, uh, then I'm convinced now that yes, these exist, but up until that time, I hadn't even thought about UFOs. There's lots of objects flying around Gulf Breeze, and that doesn't make them alien spacecraft. If UFOs are not flying saucers, what could they be? Perhaps an experimental helicopter? Or a new type of aircraft? An odd cloud formation? Or a meteor? Some UFO photos are practical jokes. Take a closer look at this. Special computer analysis reveals that this flying saucer is suspended by a string. Perhaps you can explain this UFO. It's remarkably similar to this squadron of planes. What is it? So, from this video, we can tell that some people believe that they have seen spacecrafts, and other people look for logical explanations. In this lesson, we will explore a famous incident in history when people believed a spacecraft had come to Earth. Have you ever heard of Roswell, New Mexico? Do you know anything about what happened there? If you do, then that's great. If you do not know anything about what happened in Roswell, just hold on. You are about to learn the details of the strange goings on there way back in 1947. But before we get to the article, you have to know that this lesson is just a little bit different from past lessons. In other lessons, you have been provided with the graphic organizer that you were to complete to show your understanding of what you were reading as well as your personal thinking. In this lesson, you get to decide which chart or organizer you would like to create and complete. Maybe there was one that you liked better than others. This is an opportunity to use that organizer again, except a bit more independently. First, let's take a minute and review the three organizers that you can choose from to create and complete for this lesson. Your first choice is the notes thinking chart. To create this chart, you would simply create three columns on a sheet of paper. In the first column, you would record the lines from the text that contained important information to remember. In the middle column, you would paraphrase the information on those lines. And in the third column, you would record some of the thinking you were doing while reading the article. Your second choice is the Topics, Details, Responses chart. This one is also three columns. If you remember, in the first column, you record the subheading for each section of the article. Then you write a main idea statement for that section. In the middle column, you list the details of the section that you thought were important. Considering those details will help you to write that main idea statement under the subheading in the first column. The third column would be where you would record your thinking. 
Your third choice is the GIST thinking chart. This one is only two columns. To successfully complete this chart, you would highlight just the most important words or phrases from sections of the article. Then you would combine what you highlighted together to create GIST statements. The second column is where you record the thinking you're doing while you were reading. After you watch this next segment that will get you into the text, I will review with you how each of the charts could look specifically for this text. So let's get started reading. Have in front of you the article, Roswell, UFOs, and Aliens. Then follow along with this model of reading and annotating the first section of the text. As you know, for this lesson, you get to decide which graphic organizer you would like to complete. But no matter which organizer you're completing, you're still going to be looking for important information, paraphrasing that information, and capturing your thinking. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to read the article. And as you're reading, you're going to highlight facts that you think might be important and also pay attention to your thinking. I've started you with the first part of this article, so follow along with me as I read the beginning of the article to see the facts that I've highlighted and also the comments that I've made. The title of this article is Roswell, UFOs, and Aliens. In June 1947, an unusual incident happened in New Mexico. An object, which some believed was a UFO, or an unidentified flying object, crashed on a ranch near the town of Roswell. This event immediately made Roswell famous. Its population began to grow. The UFO incident got a lot of attention. People wondered if an alien spacecraft had come to Earth. Others said the government was trying to hide what really happened. Let's take a closer look at the Roswell incident. And you can see that for this paragraph, I highlighted almost the entire paragraph because it was full of a lot of factual information about what happened in Roswell. And my comment that I made here was that these sentences are just a good overview of the Roswell incident, and I have heard of this incident before. But what I didn't know and found interesting was that because of this, the population of Roswell grew. We have the first section, the Roswell incident. In June 1947, a young boy, Vernon, was doing chores on a sheep ranch. He noticed something unusual gleaming in the distance. He chose not to investigate. My comment right there was, well, I wonder why. I wonder why he didn't go investigate right then. Vernon talked to his family about what he had seen, but it wasn't until three weeks later that his father, Mac Brazel, took his family to the site. The family found something they had never seen before. Silver scraps with mysterious writing were scattered all over. The text was in bright pink and purple. My comment there was, well, they're very strange colors for an alien spacecraft to use. And now notice how I highlighted the facts in this paragraph. I chose to go back to our GIST strategy and look for just what do I think were the most important tidbits in this paragraph. So I highlighted in June 1947 a young boy Vernon noticed something. He chose not to investigate, but three weeks later his father, Mac Brazel, took the family to the site. The family found the silver scraps with mysterious writing and the text was in pink and purple. Next paragraph. Mac, who was the father, remember, put the debris in sacks. Several days later, he traveled to Roswell with the mysterious silver scraps. With a population of 11,000, Roswell was the closest big town to the ranch. It was 30 miles away. When Brazel, who remember that's Mac Brazel, the father, arrived in town, he reported what he had seen to the local sheriff. The sheriff couldn't identify the items in the sacks. So he, the sheriff now, called the Roswell Army Airfield, or the RAAF. The next day, many newspapers had front page stories about how aliens had landed on Earth. And my comment here was, how did that happen? Where did that explanation come from? Who came up with the alien idea? Who wrote that story? And again, I went back and highlighted just what I thought were the most important tidbits in the facts in 
this paragraph. So I have Mac travel to Roswell with the mysterious scraps. Brazel, who now is Mac, the father, reported what he'd seen to the local sheriff. He, the sheriff, called the RAAF, and then newspapers had front page stories about the aliens. Last paragraph that I'm going to read. After the U.S. military read the headlines, they thought the news would upset people. The Army ordered the RAAF to change its story about what was found. Newspapers then reported that it was only a weather balloon that had crashed on the ranch. And my comment here was, eh, I don't know, a weather balloon seems kind of like a suspicious explanation. All of a sudden, oh, it was just a weather balloon. For almost 30 years, many people accepted this statement. However, there were still rumors that it was a flying saucer. Some people believed that the government knew it was a UFO. They also believed that officials removed alien bodies from the wreckage. My comment here was, what in the world? I wonder where that story about alien bodies came from. They thought the government was trying to cover up what had really happened. So the tidbits that I captured that I thought were most important, the U.S. military thought the news would upset people, so then newspapers reported it was just a weather balloon. Many people accepted that statement, but there were still rumors that it was a flying saucer, and some people believed the government knew it was a UFO, they believed that alien bodies had been removed, and they thought the government was trying to cover up what really happened. Okay, your job. Continue reading the article, and as you're reading, highlight the facts that you think are important to remember, and also remember to capture your thinking. And then when you're finished, you'll transfer what you have found in the article to the graphic organizer of your choice. Now, one more time, I'm going to quickly go through the three chart organizer choices with you and show you how they could look for the section of the Roswell UFOs and Aliens text that I read. And by the way, when you complete your chart, you will only really need to do it for the section of the article that you read independently. So as I'm sharing these examples, when you see the chart that you would like to complete, you may want to either pause the video so you can copy the chart onto your own paper, or you could also quickly take a picture of the chart so you can refer to it later. Okay, got it? Here we go with your chart choices. Your first choice again is the notes thinking chart. This chart is three columns. In the first column you would list the line numbers that, where you located important information. In the middle column you would paraphrase that information and then in the third column you would list some of the thoughts you had while you were reading. Your next choice is the Topic Details Responses chart. Again, this chart is three columns. In the first column, you would record the subheadings in the text. You would also write a main idea statement for what that entire section was about. What will help you to create that main idea statement is the middle column. In the middle column, you will list important details from the section. Then you would consider all of those details and think of how you could pull all of them together to write your main idea statement for that section in the first column. The third column, Responses, is for you to list what you were thinking while you were reading. Your third choice is the GIST thinking chart. This chart is just two columns. To complete this chart, you have to make sure that you have highlighted the most important words and phrases from the article, then in the first column, you will try to pull the words and phrases together into well-written gist statements that capture the most important ideas. Notice that for my gist thinking chart, I chose to divide each subheading into separate paragraphs to write my gist statements. Otherwise, the statements would have been too long and difficult to write. The second column is where you would write the thinking you were doing while reading. In life, it is always good to have choices. In this lesson, you get to decide on the charter organizer that makes the most sense to you to complete. Hopefully, going forward with your schoolwork, you will remember these charts. Even if a teacher doesn't direct you to complete one, you can still create one for yourself to help you to focus on the text and to make sure that you are reading closely and carefully. This is a very good habit for you to continue with anytime you are given a text to read that has a lot of information that you need to remember. Use the choices you have to take control of your learning.